Hello, I'm Anastasia Tolpigo, Application Engineer at Advantech, and today I'd like to show you how to configure RAID 5 on your server. Here I have an AIMB 564 industrial motherboard. It's got two sets of one gig memory. Underneath, underneath this fan, there is an Intel Core 2 Duo CPU at a 2.5 gigahertz. Right here, I have three Seagate hard drives at 500 gigabytes each. This is a redundant power supply used to power this whole scenario. Also, I have connected a standard VGA monitor, a keyboard, and a mouse. Lastly, specifically to configure RAID onto an XP system, you will need a disk drive and a floppy drive for the drivers. The floppy drive is normally only required for an XP operating system. Anything higher with an onboard RAID on the motherboard will already come preloaded with the driver and you will not need to use the floppy disk upon installation. RAID 5 is a block level striping with distributed parity configuration, meaning that the arrangement distributes parity along with the data and requires all drives to be present to operate. The amount of storage is limited to the smallest disk you have. In our case, it's 500 gigabytes. This could easily be one of our rack mount or wall mount IPC systems that can be configured on our Advantech iPlanet site. But in this demonstration, we will do the RAID configuration ourselves. It is important to make sure that all three of your hard drives are properly connected to the SATA 1, 2, and 3 ports on your motherboard. We have now entered BIOS to continue on with our RAID configuration. Initially, you want to make sure that your floppy drive A is active and enabled in your BIOS system. Next, we will double check that our on-chip IDE device in SATA mode is configured to RAID. as well as external IDE controller is configured to RAID and IDE mode. Now we will quit and save and restart our system again. The next step is to configure our system BIOS and the current version for the AIMB is version 1.27. In the standard CMOS features, double check that drive A, your floppy drive, is enabled then next, in the advanced BIOS features, we need to change where we boot our system from. Since we are trying to install an XP from the disk drive operating system, we will want to boot from there first. And the next one will be floppy by default. Next, in the integrated peripherals menu, we will need to change the on-chip IDE device settings particularly the SATA mode, which needs to be in RAID. Normally, it'll come as IDE in default. Also, the external IDE controller needs to be in RAID and IDE mode. Enable that. Now we will quit and save our BIOS menu and restart the system. With a motherboard that comes with an onboard RAID device, the configuration utility will already be included. And once you move into post, the next menu will give you the option to hit control I in order to enter the configuration utility, which I will do now. And this is the RAID configuration utility where I will create my RAID volume. Volume zero is always the first one. I will select enter. And now I have the option of choosing which RAID volume I would like. In this particular board and utility, you have the option of RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 10, and RAID 5. Today, we will configure RAID 5, which I will select. And the strip size and capacity will be selected automatically for me as a default setting.
I can create, I can hit enter, enter again, and lastly, will be prompted if I do indeed want to choose to create a volume, which I do in this case. Now my RAID volume has been created, and we can verify that everything is working properly and normally, and now our hard disks are indeed in a RAID volume. I will exit and save. Once you have exited out of your RAID configuration utility and restarted your system, your system will begin to boot from the CD-ROM drive. This setup blue screen will prompt you to hit F6 in order to install a third-party RAID driver. After a few moments of setting up, your Windows boot screen, DOS boot screen, will prompt you to specify an additional device that might have your RAID driver. In our case, it's the floppy disk drive. And I'm going to specify that floppy disk drive by hitting S. And all of the possible choices of a RAID controller will come up. And I can select the RAID controller for the ICH8R chipset because that's the chipset that is on our board. And I can hit enter. Now my system recognizes this third party disk driver that is in my floppy disk and I can continue with setup. Our XP operating system is ready to set up itself as well. I can continue with the setup by selecting enter. Now see now it's XP. I can agree using F8 to all the regulations and certifications and use unpartitioned disk space by selecting install with the enter key and I will format the partition using the NTFS file system in the quick setting and now our disk begins to format. Once the Windows Blue installation screen is finished with the setup and installing the system, your computer will restart and this is the next screen that will pop up and now your XP is ready to start installing devices. As you can see we are now in the Windows XP booting screen and your devices have begun to install themselves. Your operating system is now distributed among the RAID volume. This should take a little bit of time, as you can see, 34 minutes. You can now configure your operating system to your own personal preferences. And right now I will not install any software for antivirus for the purposes of this tutorial. We'll do a test run on this one. We can hit next. Now we are done prefer with the preferences and we will log into our Windows environment. We are now in the Windows operating system environment and we can double check the size of our disk by selecting properties on the local disk and verifying that we do indeed have one terabyte of disk space available. And that will conclude the configuration of a RAID 5, part of the Advantech iPlanet online video series. For information about these products and more, as always, visit buy.advantech.com.